BestBookBits.com presents The Great Sales Book by Jack Collis. Published in 1996 and weighing 240 pages. The Great Sales Book gives you all the practical help and advice you need to maximize your full selling potential. The Great Sales Book offers useful, tried and tested advice on how to increase your sales productivity. Better from, from Jack Collis's years of experience as he guides you through the psychology of selling teaches you the art of effective face-to-face -face communication and gives you excellent tips on how to powerfully present yourself and your product to get the results you want. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of The Great Sales Book. Introduction. People do business with people. Selling is not seen as a function of outsmarting anyone, but as a responsibility to add value to whatever offer we are making and to whomever it is being made. Selling is supplying first class information in a creative way that will develop a future relationship that is beneficial to all parties. Successful selling is essentially a matter of being a first class communicator and that each sales situation is a unique experience brought about by a mix of buyer and seller needs, wants, attitudes and habits. All impacted upon by location, time, constraints, and the expectations of other interested and involved parties. Perception is a critical issue in every sales presentation. The ability to correctly identify issues as they unfold and select the right response is a skill not every salesperson can claim. Part 1, The Psychology of Selling. Chapter 1, Thoughts on Selling. What we think is what we get. What we think is is what we get, so be sure that what you are thinking is positive and reflects your current aspirations. You have to be in it to win it applies as much to life as anything else. If you confuse technological issues with basic human emotions, you will limit your success. The communication method is the technology by which you make the offer. The sale will be made or lost on human emotion. How to get the most business from existing customers. The three Ds still apply to customers. They die, they desert, they depart. They will always need to be replenished with new customers. That is why prospecting is so critical to sales success. Don't listen to those who say it's not done that way. If Michelangelo had, he would have painted the Sistine floor and it would surely be rubbed away by today. Commitment is the key. Winning is the motivation. It has been said many times that ideas are a dime a dozen, but remember that the idea you have and don't use are no more effective than the ideas you have never had and can't use. Today, you have the time, 24 hours, the same as everyone else. What you do with it depends on what you believe. Chapter 2, Increasing Your Sales Productivity There are only three ways to improve your personal sales productivity. Number one, increase the value of your prospects. Number two, improve your selling performance. Three, work harder. The first way is to ask more people to buy what you sell. Changing your attitude, brushing up on your selling skills and using time more effectively. We are slaves on the treadmill of our habits. We are slaves on the treadmill of our habits. Paying the price for what we want in life is a key issue for those of us who want to succeed above the ordinary. The more we want, the more it costs. Success is limited by the price we are willing to pay. All of life is a compromise. Trading off one aspiration against another is a reflection of our willingness to pay a particular price. Everything demands a price. The trick is to pay the right price for the right things, to know when to compromise and which compromises to make. You need to be able to identify your goals clearly so that you can visualize them constantly. Preparation. Now that you know where you want to go, you are in a position to prepare for the journey. Commitment. Of all the prices to pay, commitment is the most important. Clearly define your goals, prepare yourself for the journey, and then commit yourself to the job ahead. If you don't change the cause, you won't change the results. Chapter 3. Prospecting your way to millions. Without prospects, a salesperson has no business. The quality of our prospects decide the level of our success. Of all the skills required by a salesperson, prospecting is the most important. There are three aspects of prospecting. Number one, organizing prospect and client information. Number two, analyzing your sales performance. And number three, organizing your daily and weekly activity. Ratios are essential for effective planning. Remember, not making a decision is a decision in itself. 
Our habits are a key issue in our selling effectiveness. Remember, those who cannot ask cannot live, and those who don't ask don't receive. The goal of modern salesperson is to reach agreement rather than overcome objection. Reach agreement rather than overcome objections. And chapter 7, the sales story. Know your sales story word perfect. Make it about life, not product. And tell it with conviction. Talk about wants, not needs. Uncovering wants is so much more productive than getting acceptance of needs. Focus on solutions, not on problems. Stories are a powerful way of communicating with each other. The more emotion the story has, the more impact it will have, and the more success you will enjoy. How good is the story they are using? Selling is the art of persuading your prospects to buy your solutions to their problems and wants. And chapter 8, why people buy. Most people have three basic concerns with making decisions, including buying decisions. Cost, fear, risk. Cost, fear, risk. The motivation of benefit, support, and assurance drives the prospect towards yes. Hidden buyer motivators. Number one, the obligation factor. Two, testimonials. Three, the friendship principle. And number four, the referral method. Chapter nine, selling buyer benefits. The difference between features and benefits. Four-part benefit selling model. Part one, explain the feature in detail. Number two, use the connecting words. And three, describe the benefits in detail. Focus on emotion at all times in detail. And number four, ask the commitment question. Don't sell me products or service. Sell me ideas, a better self-image, freedom from fear and want, and a philosophy on life that will enable me to grow and reach my potential as a human being. Chapter 10, the visual way to sell success. A picture is worth a thousand words. Use your product as a visual aid. Too many sales are lost because of poor presentation. If you're not ready to sell, your prospects won't be ready to buy. If you're not ready to sell, your prospects won't be ready to buy. Being relaxed and positive during your presentation is possible only when you are confident that your support material and preparation is first class. As products and services become more complex, the need for simplification grows. The simpler you can make it for your prospect to understand you, the greater your chances of making the sale. Perception is the reality of human experience. Perception is the reality of human experience. If your prospects perceive you to be no different from the other salespeople they deal with, then you aren't. It doesn't matter what you think, it only matters what they think. Creative ideas reduce to clear copy, which is easily understood visually. The reason why showing is so much better than telling is that the prospect's ability to absorb information and their willingness to understand is increased dramatically by using their eyes as well as their ears. Chapter 11, reaching agreement by resolving doubts and objections. Nothing is ever gained by winning an argument and losing a prospect or customer. Prospects and customers will raise objections and be glad that they do. Otherwise, you would never know what they're thinking or how much progress you are making. Objections or doubts are natural. They are the signposts that show you the way to create a satisfied prospect. To deal effectively with objections, it is essential that you don't fear them. Welcome the prospect's involvement and use that involvement to make sure the prospect gets what they want. The first principle of dealing with objections is to listen and learn. Listen and learn. Listen carefully and with interest to what your prospect is saying. And you will reduce objections to a process rather than a confrontation. In a confrontation, you can easily win the fight but lose the war. The truth is... Your prospects have the only absolute power. They can turn off, say nothing, not listen, or terminate discussion at any time they wish. They can go somewhere else and buy what they want. They can cease being your prospect any time they want, and many will do so unless you meet or exceed their expectations. The objective at all times is to satisfy the needs and wants of your prospects. There are only two kinds of objections, those that are genuine and those that are false. The key issue is to, is to always preserve the relationship. The prospect may not be ready to buy today, but if you keep their confidence in you, they may very well buy next week. You are in the business for the long term, and to survive long term, you need prospects who become customers. Objections fall into four categories. 
No desire, no need, no money, no time. More than 70% of the sales are made on emotional issues, and unless the prospect becomes emotionally involved with the product or service, they are unlikely to buy. I understand how you feel, however, and then state your point of view. Don't use the yes but technique, it's a rebuttal, no matter how it is used. Basic strategy for handling doubts or objections. Listen actively. Show you are listening, nod to show you have heard. Hear them out. Listen patiently to everything your prospect has to say. Don't interrupt. Feed it back. Ask your prospect to confirm that you have understood by restating it in your own words what has been said. Think before answering. When you are sure you understand the objective, give your solution. Desire can be only be built by painting pictures in the mind of your prospect so that the benefits come alive and they see themselves enjoying them. Remember that people only buy for two reasons, either to solve a problem or to make themselves feel good. There are only two reasons why people buy, to solve a problem or to make themselves feel good. Remember, we are all constantly tuned into the station, WIIFM, what's in it for me? So play the benefit hit they want to hear, play it loud and clear so they know beyond all doubt how they will benefit from your offer. And chapter 12, closing the sale. Nothing happens until someone buys something. Nothing happens until someone buys something. Many do not buy because they are not asked. There is a time to talk, a time to listen, and a time to close. Waiting for the customer to buy has lost millions of sales and created as many dissatisfied customers. Fear of rejection and not wanting to be seen as being pushy. We fear rejections because it damages our self-image and we will do anything to preserve our self-image. Prospects and customers are not always concerned about how we feel. They are more concerned about how they feel. The customer is saying no to our products, service or ideas, not to us as a person. Building relationship is always the key issue. The always be closing ABC technique. It is true that the body acts out what the mind is thinking. And if you are in a negative in your thinking, you will display it in your action. Moods are catching and we influence others by the way we act. Mutual trust is the key to developing long-term effective relationships. All enduring relationships from school friends to parents and children to lovers and married couples and to work colleagues are based on mutual trust. And chapter 13, the gentle art of communicating. Customers are not an option, they are a necessity. If we all speak the same language, how come we don't understand each other? The whole critical issue is one of matching actions to words. When in doubt, people tend to believe actions, not words. What we say is what we do must become our credo if we want to communicate effectively. There are two qualities that stand out and seem to be common in all great salespeople I've come across. The first is the ability to give a hard no when an easy yes might suffice. The second is the ability to really understand that selling, or indeed any career, requires balance and perspective. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, make allowance for their doubting too. Before the salesperson can send the message in spoken words, they must first see it as a picture in their mind. The degree to which the prospect understands what the salesperson has said depends on how well their picture matches the picture the salesperson has sent. Chapter 14, questions are the answer. Every time you ask a question, you are inviting someone to talk. People like talking, so don't be surprised if you finish up being popular and very successful. What people need and want is entirely different question. If they need and want were the same thing, there are no difficulties. Whether they're spending time trying to convert people from what they want to what, in your opinion, they need, it's up to you. My money is on something wants. When you are interested in others, they will be interested in you. When you are interested in others, they will be interested in you. To succeed, all you need to do is to make someone like you. Soft questions will build relationships for you. Silence is the ultimate weapon of power. Spend 80% of your time on the problem and 20% on the solution. The strongest criticisms made about salespeople, they don't listen. They are only interested in selling something. They don't care about it. 
Do the research, ask soft questions, find out what the consumer wants, then provide the solution. Match your product or service to the perceived wants and you have a great sales success. Chapter 15, listening to understand. If people listen to themselves more often, they would talk less. Research tells that the main issue for this poor retention is that a retention span is on average 45 seconds. We tend not to listen to people whose voices we don't like, yet the message they have may be more important than the message from voices we do like. Listening improved dramatically when he focused hard on what people were saying to him. Being a good listener is essential to being an effective communicator. The payoff is in superior relationships. The more courteous you are in listening, the greater your chances of success. And chapter 16, making powerful presentations. Imagination is one of the last remaining legal means you have to gain an unfair advantage over your competition. My life is a performance for which I was never given the chance to rehearse. You have the chance to rehearse your presentation, so make the most of it. When you look right, you will feel right. When you feel right, you will act right. Choose your words with care. Words are the tools of your trade. Choose words that are easily understood. The objective is to not impress, but to communicate and influence. Focus on why your solution will solve the problem or meet the want. And stress that you are the right person to see that whatever needs to be done to make your offer work is done to the satisfaction of your prospect. And chapter 17, follow up with after sales service. This is where you win in the long term. Selling is the easy part. Keeping the customer is the real test of any business. And chapter 18, dealing with complaints. 4% of dissatisfied customers complain. The other 96% don't talk instead. They go to your comp competitor and it costs six times as much to replace them as to service them as existing customers. A good general principle to follow in all complaints, disputes or negotiations is to separate the people from the problem. Separate the people from the problem and be soft on the people and hard on the problem. Chapter 19, negotiating your way to sales success. Whatever difference of opinions you have with a person or persons, that difference is a product of thinking, either theirs or yours. All efforts so far in building our sales career have been aimed at developing and maintaining relationships. Our objective is to make sales, to have the prospect become a client, to develop the relationship with mutual trust, and to keep the client as the basis of our business. Perceptions conflict is not about reality, it's about perception, and perception is a product of people's minds. That people see what they want to see, hear what they want to hear, and believe to be true what they want to be true. And this is part of the problem with every negotiation. Negotiation is a process of communication back and forth with the purpose of reaching a win-win solution. I learned that behind every position, there are shared interests. And if you focused on the interest, not position, you're on your way to becoming a first-class negotiator. Always be hard on the problem, but soft on the people. What if in? One of the most powerful methods of solving any problem is the what if. Once you start what if in with the person with whom you are negotiating, both minds become focused on one problem, which is to create solutions which will satisfy the interest of both parties and in the process solve the problem. A critical part of the presentation in terms of negotiation strategy is to decide your negotiation style. There are basically five styles. Number one, competitive. A win-lose approach which leads to confrontation. Number two, compromise. A win-win approach which is suboptimal. Cooperation. A win-win approach which creates joint problem solving. And number four, accommodation. A lose-win approach which leads to capitulation. And number five, avoidance. A lose-lose approach which leads to withdrawal. If you move too freely towards the other party's goals and you don't cause them to move towards your goal, then you are in an accommodation style. The result will be that you lose and the other party will win. Solomon decision. You take half and I'll take half. Unfortunately, too many negotiations result in a compromise. Negotiation range. Implicit in every negotiation is the knowledge of each party that they will have to move once the first offers are made. If neither moves, then you get avoidance or no negotiation takes place. If one moves and the other fails to do so, then a win-lose situation is created. In order for a win-win solution to come about, both parties need to move. So generally speaking, 
the first offers decide the range of the negotiation. So the art of deciding final offers is a very real skill in negotiating. All negotiating is about people, how they feel, what they believe in, and what they are willing to defend. Once you're in control of the issues and fix the people problem, you effectively fix the negotiation. First, be sure you are prepared by knowing what outcome you want. Make your offer and stick to it. When you make your offer, keep quiet. Don't speak, shut up. Silence is your most powerful weapon, as while they are talking, you are learning. Trust is a powerful weapon. Chapter 20, Concepts. Creativity is a critical issue in today's fast-changing world, and imagination is the soul of creativity. Don't follow the crowd. Nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. Don't sell products or services. Sell solutions, philosophies, ideas, and concepts. For you to unlock the door to selling success, identify your real sale and sell it, and fund it with your product or service. Part 2. Be your own sales manager. Chapter 21, You, Yourself Incorporated. Singleness of purpose is one of the chief essentials for success in life, no matter what may be one's aim. John D. Rockefeller Jr. You are the master of your own destiny. The cold, hard fact of human development is that it is all about self-development. You are the managing director, marketing manager, sales manager, accountant, and chief motivator of You, Yourself Incorporated. You are the decision maker in every aspect of your life. Others can stop you temporarily. You are the only one who can do it permanently. Zig Ziglar. How to be your own sales manager. Identify the main areas for which a sales manager is responsible and take over that responsibility for your own development. The four principal areas are lead, direct, develop, motivate. Make the most of yourself because that's all there is of you. If there is hope in the future, there is power in the present. John Maxwell. At least once a month, read a book on the subject that deals directly with sales matters. At least every two months, read a book on the subject allied to business. Remember, there are three factors that will decide what level of success you achieve in your life. They are what you see, what you hear, and who you associate with. The Lord has two ends, one to sit on and the other to think with. Success depends on which one you use the most. Talk about your prospective buyers whenever possible and only about yourself when asked. The best salesperson is one who does the most listening as opposed to the most talking. One of the most powerful skills you can acquire is to be a good listener and show a lot of interest in your client. Chapter 23, Self-Motivation. Winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is Vince Lombardi. Motivation comes from within. The only motivation is self-motivation, and you are always motivated. It's not what you are that holds you back. It's what you think you're not. Dennis Waitley. The result is always, you did or you didn't. You did or you didn't. If you focus on doing instead of trying, two things will happen. First, you will succeed more often. Because doing is more positive than trying. Second, because you will have removed the failure syndrome. Commitment is the key to goal achieving. And that goal achieving is the driving force that powers personal motivation. And motivation is the fuel of life. Commitment is the fire you light within that won't go out whatever difficulties are placed in your path. It's the fire that can only be extinguished by the achievement of the goal to which you are committed. Winning is not an accident. Winning is planned in your lifetime, goals and going after them with every skill at your disposal. Commitment is the driving force that makes it possible to rest until you have accomplished your goals. Chapter 24, The Mind Power Advantage. We are total mental creatures and selling is a total mental function. Sales are made in mind. Salespeople who understand and apply mind power have a distinct advantage over those who either cannot or will not learn how. You are as rich as you are now because of the way you have used your thoughts in the past. Poverty thinking brings poverty living. Bountiful thinking results in bountiful living. You are currently as happy as your thinking. Happy thinking builds a happy life. To direct your subconscious mind, you need to feed it with the illusion of what you want. The subconscious mind, not knowing the difference between illusion and reality, not knowing the difference between illusion and reality, will accept the illusion as a reality, 
and then we'll bring it about in your life. Chapter 25, Time Management. Time is like a precious jewel. It must be guarded well and worn with discretion, or you will suddenly find it has been stolen. In terms of time effectiveness, there are two broad options we can consider. The first is to identify our top 10 time wasters and try to eliminate them. The second option is to become wholly goal oriented Plan three types of priority activity. What must be done? What needs to be done? And what might be done if there is time? Find out how you are currently using your time. Keep a time log of your activities for at least a month. And at the end of that period, analyze how you used your time. Your real work is selling, not shuffling paper. The goal is to make sales. The other parts of your work may be necessary, but sales are critical. No sales, no future. Chapter 26, achieving your goals. All successful people have a goal. No one can get anywhere unless they know where they want to go and what they want to be or do. Norman Vincent Peale. We are free up to the point of choice. Then the choice controls the chooser. Once you have set a goal and started the activity necessary to achieve it, your mind's goal-seeking device operates automatically to achieve your goal. All you have to do is keep it on target, which means you necessarily change or correct it to keep on target. If you constantly focus on the goal, the mechanism will ensure you hit the target. When you fail to plan, you automatically set up failure. Keep your mind constantly on your possible dream and focus all your energies on it. Your mind will do the rest. Losers in life will do anything to achieve a pleasing method process, while winners will endure any pain to get a pleasing result. The more you want, the more it costs. Success is limited by the price you are willing to pay. The price is not paid in money. It is paid in knowledge, activity, creative thinking, innovation, identification, preparation, commitment, and compromise. Success requires more than hard work. It requires imagination and creatively applied to real-life goals in a purposeful way. It requires faith and belief in yourself and in your goals. Until you make a list of the activities you are going to carry out in order to achieve your goal, you are largely only dealing with the want to, which is important for without strong desire, nothing will be accomplished. However, the difference between success and wishing will depend on whether you take the next step of the doing, the how-to. Ask yourself this question. How long is it since I took an hour, two hours, a whole week to sit down and go through this planning operation as if my... The 10-step guide to writing down your goals. Number one, to find the goal. For example, I want to increase my net income by 20% within nine months, or I want to sell 10 of our new product X within 25 days. Number two, write it down in the section of the goal record sheet headed goal. Check that it is written in a valid way that is, it must be specific, time-bound, measurable, and achievable. Number three, give your goal a priority. Write it in the priority box. Number four, write it down in the section called measurement method. How you propose to measure your success in attaining your goal. Number five, plan the activities you need to carry out to achieve your goal. Think them through. This is the heart of the method. Stay with it until you know how to achieve your goal. Number six, now start writing down these activities on the goal record sheet. Write them in sequential order so that you were doing in a logical plan way that needs to be done to reach your goal. And number seven, number your activities from one. Give each activity a sequential number. Place the number in the column headed item. Plan to do in the column called plan to achieve objective alongside its activity number. And number nine, decide the date by which you will finish each activity. Write the date under the heading proposes completion date. And number 10, as you completed each plan activity, sign it off in the column headed date completed by. Sign it off by entering the date by which you completed the activity and initialing the date. This will be a constant check on whether you are completing your activities as planned. Chapter 28, Creating Wealth. Wealth is a good servant, but a very bad mistress. Personal freedom is an objective. The first principle of wealth creation is improve your abilities so that you will be paid more. The second principle in wealth creation is pay yourself first. Too few people reach total 
financial independence, not because they didn't earn the money, but because they didn't have a plan for creating wealth. The real reason that much of our wealth escapes us is that we rarely take the time to think the whole matter through and establish plans and priorities for creating wealth in our life. Get yourself and your family a good insurance protection plan before you do anything else. It makes no sense to try to build wealth before you safeguard what you already have. Short-term get-rich-quick schemes are okay if you can afford the risk. It isn't difficult to get rich over the long term. All our tomorrows becomes today, and each today is as sweet as any other. Logic says that as long as wealth does not possess us and that we possess it, then wealth should be capable of improving the quality of our life. The most important issue for people who want to create wealth in their life is letting time work for you. The sooner you start creating wealth, the easier it will be. And if you start doing it in a constant manner over a long period of time, you will always succeed. The first step is to start thinking about creating wealth and about what you want your money to do. The second step is to pay off your debts. It's the simplest form of wealth creation. Pay off all your high interest debts because no matter where you invest, you won't earn as much as you are paying for your mortgage, credit cards, and the like. The third step is to look at how you are paid and whether you are paying tax effectively. If you want to create long-lasting wealth, follow the examples of those who've created wealth slowly and consistently and don't lead extravagant lifestyles. The most successful people are those who balance their lifestyle to their income. If you want to create more wealth in your life, do it. Don't think about it do it. Part 3, Reaching Your Potential. Chapter 29, Making Personal Progress. Fears are self-created imaginations which make negative associations of ideas. Fear is your projection about the future in your imagination. Fear is only an attitude. You only become a failure when you pronounce that judgment on yourself. Being excessively strongly concerned with achieving successful results is an unhelpful attitude that builds fear of failure and eventually leads to actual failure. Motivation can be summed up as reward, which means what's in it for me. And chapter 30, go for it. Every day, remind yourself of your own ability, of your good mind, and affirm that you can make something really good out of your life. Even not choosing is a choice. You cannot escape making choices. Everything is a decision, a choice. The difference between great success and average performance is the drive to make the extra effort needed to be your best. And that's a wrap on The Great Sales Book by Jack Collis. Subscribe to our channel now for future summaries and check out our website, bestbookbits.com, for the written and audio summary. The website is amassed with hundreds of book summaries from the classics to the current. Have a browse to help further your education through the power of books. Like, comment, or share if you got something from this summary. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have yourself an amazing day.